Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at Dev Diary 112, which talks about political lobbies in the upcoming Sphere of Influence uh, patch, which is going to be on May 6th. Now for this, uh, I don't think this is necessarily as exciting overall uh, in terms of mechanics as some of the other stuff we've been seeing, like the absolutely insane new ownership changes, which are really going to shake up the metagame. But I do think this is going to give you a little bit more granularity in terms of how you interact with other countries. And I think that this is a really good thing. Uh, and so, and hopefully it really textures how the AI plays, and there's actually, it, I think this might lead to RP play, which we don't know anything about that, um, being a lot more uh, interesting in the form of political lobbies, which are lobbies that are going to get formed as a result of uh, various actions and ones you can encourage slash discourage both in your own country and as we are going to see in other p c uh, countries. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello and welcome to, what is this? What is this? Where's our happy Thursday? Riot. Okay. Uh, hello and welcome to another Victoria 3 Dev Diary. Today's topic will be political lobbies, which will be a new feature added in the Sphere of Influence expansion with some elements uh, made for the free in the 1.7 update. Man, the lack of S on Sphere of Influence is just like, I'm, I'm still, my head is still reeling. It's Sphere of Influence, not Spheres of Influence. The truth hurts. In my head, it's still Spheres. So, what is a political lobby? Put simply, a political lobby is a collection of interest groups pushing for the implementation of a specific foreign policy agenda their country so interest groups are getting added texture in that you know they are lobbying for stuff that is external to your country which is completely new um and i think that this i, I mean hopefully it makes the interest groups feel like they have a, quite a bit more soul in this sort of stuff and there's still like features for interest groups that i would like change um like for example i would love if interest groups didn't completely follow whoever's the leader of the interest group in terms of their ideology and just like 100 percent back them even if they're doing something inconsistent with the, the interest group's general ideology. Like, the market liberal landowner shouldn't be as impactful. If there's anything you think interest groups should be changed, feel free to put it in the comments, because I think that um, that's an example. It should just be a percentage. Uh, a leader should only occupy a percentage of the overall clout in terms of decision-making. But anyways... Uh, superficially, this may seem uh, quite similar to political parties, but there's a couple key differences in how they function. I mean, they care about foreign stuff. Political lobbies always form for a specific reason, often due to diplomatic catalysts, more on these for precise conditions for how they can form in, uh, and how they can create lobbies in next week's Dev Diary and pursue long-term art agenda that does not change over time. Interest groups can be part of multiple lobbies so long as those lobbies do not have directly contradictory goals. This is also super interesting. Uh, you know, I, I hope for an eventual situation where it feels like navigating a web of, uh, you know, interest group uh, uh, opinion. And, like, if the interest groups... Look, there are, like, one of the ways you can actually get stuck in Victoria 3 is by revs being, like, uh, something that is completely unavoidable because you have two sides uh, revving for different reasons and you can't satisfy them both. And if this creates more of these situations, it'll create a more interesting environment. Although, j probably an environment that's much more frustrating for a newer player. Uh, the agenda of a political lobby is always in relation to a specific foreign power. So, always in relation to a specific foreign power. Uh, this gives us, uh, you know... Okay, um, this is going to be uh, that it is a specific and singular foreign power is going to be, I think, a good thing. Uh, not just a general make friends with anybody thing. Uh, but um, I assume that you could just get more and more and more lobbies for different, uh, you know, countries and that this makes sense. Okay. And there are four types of political lobbies being added in the 1.4 sphere singular of influence uh pro-country lobby this political lobby seeks to promote and advance the interest of their target country both in relation to the home country and in a more global sense i don't know in the more global sense how this would happen but okay um anti-country lobby the opposite uh pro-overlord lobby so this is for your subjects a pro-overlord lobby can only form in subject country and will always target the overlord it seeks to promote loyalty towards the overlord and anti-overlord lobby um these are really truly the most self-explanatory names i've ever like red uh I, and I, I don't think we need to fully fully unpack them okay interest group can join political lobbies for a variety of reasons such as ideological alignment or opposition to the country that they target and this is going to be i would it's going to be so interesting if uh, so currently, there's actually one of the reasons Council Republic, you don't pass it. One of the reasons is it makes other countries like you less unless they're also a Council Republic. 
And if they're adding more and more layers uh, of that sort of thing, it'll be interesting to see if there are some instances where you are passing or not passing a specific law purely because um, of all the lobbies associated with it. Or because you don't want to create, uh, you know, a political lobby in other countries that it's going to make it more aggressive to you. Like, can you imagine, like, if you just, like, go communism and everyone creates a political lobby against you that's really powerful, that makes them like, very aggro against you? Like, this would be an interesting uh, mechanic, although I I imagine it's really, it's one that's really easy to overdo or underdo, right, in terms of uh, how, how upset or how much it changes the AI. Okay, they target in pursuit of overarching goals, such as the industrialist joining a pro-country lobby for a wealthier, more advanced country in hoping of, of securing foreign investment capital. I'm still not sure how I how good or bad I think that other countries investing in your company uh, in your company in your country is. Other than if you can seize uh, their investments really easily, it's going to be extremely good. Uh, but that's kind of outside the scope of the discussion here. Uh, lobbies have an appeasement score, which goes up when you take actions the lobby feels align with their goals, and goes down when you take actions that they consider contradictory to those goals. Appeasement acts as a modifier on the approval of the constituent interest groups, which means that your foreign policy actions now can directly help or hinder your pol internal political goals. So they can either force revs, prevent revs, give you bonuses, take away bonuses, stuff like this. For example, are those staunchy anti-French landowners doing the landowner thing of blocking these voting rights you wanted? Simple. Uh, just declare your opposition to the France via dip diplomatic play and humiliate them, and the landowners will be so busy celebrating their victory over the uh, perfidious, uh Gaelic that they will... Gaelic, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Way to call him barbaric in one turn. Barbaric. Uh, that they will graciously let you have this one little reform. This is like, we're, we're going back. <laughs> it's, that's not France, that's Gaul. Okay. Uh, on the flip side, you might find that they're, uh, the, the very pro-British industrialists are not pleased with your continued alliance to the British rival and their previous plan of working to strengthen them in order to enact laissez-faire has now backfired and now, as they now refuse to work with you until you break said alliance, forcing you to choose which of your two goals is more important to you. And these are, this is the type of play that I think um, Victoria 3 really needs and be really immersive with. Uh, I, I think that uh, Victoria 3 should be like immersive on like the top down decision making, but that there should be a lot of it and it, you should feel like you're maneuvering your country through something. Um, and uh, I think that the lack of diplomacy having this fine granularity um, is um, in the current state is uh, something that is not so good. And this is adding that granularity. But we'll see, like, okay, so is that appeasement's at plus two? And then here we have supporters and their opinion. And then we see the improvement members, approval of the members is a, also a plus two here. And uh, we get plus two recent changes from declaring an embargo on John the, for, on the opening date. Uh, uh, and so we get a plus two approval on these guys. And I'm wondering how big this can get, uh, the appeasement score. Like, could you get an appeasement score of like 10? I don't know. That seems like a lot. Is that too much? Is that just right? Who knows? Lobbies, of course, do not only affect interest group approval. Of course. Why is that of course? Uh, but also have uh, direct... Okay, we, they talked about this earlier. Uh, direct diplomatic be benefits or drawbacks, depending, once again, on whether the actions you take are aligned with their goals. How large these are... Uh, these effects are depends on the combined cloud of the internal uh, interest groups that are part of the lobby. So you will get benefits by having uh, a lobby that's filled with people with a ton of clout. And so it's perhaps the case if you want to be buddy up super, super close with one person, um, like for example, if you're Persia and you don't want Russia to uh, put their thumb in your pie, uh, you probably want to try and see if there's a way to give more clout to the pro uh, Russia uh, you know, lobby in your in your country and try and empower them with clout. So maybe you do something like, um, if it's the if the let's say you want to go tenant farmers, except the rural folk uh, really supports the pro Russia lobby. Now maybe you go homesteading instead. Homesteading instead. That's a fun sentence. Okay. For example, having a pro country lobby will make it easier to conduct diplomacy with that country by uh, 
both increasing their AI acceptance for proposals. And that is an interesting one. And that's perhaps an abusable one uh, via reverse sways and yo-yo sways. If they are way more likely to accept stuff uh, because of the lobby, then you can kind of abuse that probably. We'll see how that shakes out. And by lowering the influence cost of any friendly packs you maintain with them. Uh, this is probably a pretty big deal uh, because lowering the diplo cost, well, diplomacy seems like it's going to be a lot more uh, important or your diplo uh, research source uh first of all uh but second of all um this if alliances become useful right now alliances are kind of not very useful uh but if they become useful that's actually a, a an agreement that takes a fair amount of diplo to maintain uh and so um decreasing that cost will be useful and increasing the cost of foreign actions such as embargoes and lowering the influence you gain from rivaling them uh as you might expect ooh, does this imply that we gain more influence from rivaling someone who there's an anti-country lobby it, well, it implies that that could be the case, but they're explicitly not saying that's the case, which implies it's not the case. But anyways, uh, as you might expect, uh, anti-country lobbies have the opposite effect, making friendly diplomacy easier and hostile actions cheaper. Uh, hostile actions cheaper. It's not quite a cost. Anyways, it's, it's not important. We'll figure it out when the time comes. On May 6th, when the DLC drops, that is May 6th. Okay, uh, anti and pro overlord lobbies also significantly influence uh, liberty desire as mentioned in the previous dev diary. Lobbies also have a secondary effect on AI behavior. So this is go this is for the RP boyos. A as an AI country with a pro-country lobby will be more likely to adopt a friendly attitude towards the target of said lobby. Now, we're going to get to this in a little bit, but you can control the lobbies in other countries or you can encourage them, which now gives you more flexibility in terms of, uh, you know, creating positive relations towards you, whereas before it's basically, like, impossible to change the attitude um, without doing strange things. Like, as soon as they start a diplo play, just siding on the side with them to change the attitude instantly, and this is kind of how you do it now. Uh, with the opposite effects for the anti-country lobby. Uh, uh, with the clout of said lobbies, once again, determining how likely the AI is to fall in line with them. Um, it, the, the, it's, like, it seems like a very simple thing that you have very simple like mechanics going uh here like in terms of okay we have an appeasement score uh it gives straight approval uh interest group approval um we have uh you know the lobbies that are in here and then the effects or the positive effects uh correlate with the clout of the people who are in here and um i i, I like the way it's kind of set up it doesn't seem like overly convoluted um you know uh in terms of understanding it all of these effects, as well as the actual creation of lobbies themselves, will be available to everyone as part of the free 1.7 update. And so I'm guessing we now are going to see for the spheres of influence expansion. Okay. Um, but uh, although Russia's uh, government currently has a positive attitude towards Austria and wishes to pursue closer relations, the powerful anti-Austrian lobby in Russia no makes it more difficult for them to agree to any new diplomatic pacts. And we see here improved relations. Let's see... Uh, how much more expensive is it? Um, appeasement would change by minus two. Um, or trade agreement. Base reluctance is 100. Uh, 10 for volume of trade. Russian GDP. Ideological. And then clout of the anti-Austrian lobbies in R Russia. Now I wish we saw which ones were in here. But minus 23 is a pretty big modifier to trade agreement. I mean they're not getting that trade agreement anyway. But you know. For those with the sphere of influence, that's sphere with a singular, uh, lobbies can, uh, can also make their will known through an opportunity or a demand. Opportunities generally come in the form of some diplomatic groundwork done by the lobby that may allow their parent uh, country to sign a diplomatic pact that's otherwise uh, difficult to get or out of reach entirely. Getting trade agreements with GPs, so you have ticking positive relations, which costs significantly, you see trade agreement right here? It costs 100. Uh, uh, where's improved relations? Uh, it's not on here. Improved relations cost like 300 with a GP, though, which means that, generally speaking, in order to get ticking positive relations, trade agreements are very useful. On top of um, trade agreements having other positive benefits in that they won't tariff you and they, don't, they often don't go free trade, so this is pretty valuable. Um, 
For pro-country lobbies, this involves dealing with the country, with the target country directly, while anti-country lobbies will instead work to create opportunities to coordinate with the target's enemies and rivals. Opportunities can be declined without any penalty and will only result in a loss of appeasement uh, if accepted but not followed through on. Accepting and following through on the opportunity will, of course, increase their appeasement. Okay, that doesn't seem too crazy. Um, lobby Opportunity Journal of France. Let's let's take a read at the lobby. The anti-British union has offered us great opportunity to sign a trade agreement with Great Britain. The lobby has offered to use their connections to smooth over, over the negotiating process, so we're going to get an easy trade agreement. Uh, negotiate. Well, we're not going to read the flavor text and then happy to accept. Okay, fair enough. This seems reasonable. Demands, of course, uh, conversely, is when an, a lobby believes that the government isn't doing enough to pursue the, their agenda and, well, demands action. That makes sense. And demand generally comes in the form of specific action that the lobby wishes to see taken uh, uh, either against or the target country or against a country relevant to them. For example, a rival or ally. And this is going to get, this is going to be so interesting if, like, if you feel like you are instead, you can't target a country directly, but you have to target the allies and people target you by targeting your allies and this type of thing. And it'll be very interesting if we get like proxy wars and stuff like this. But this, like overall, this doesn't seem like it would facilitate something like a proxy war. But um, yeah, a demand can be declined, but doing so significantly decreases the appeasement of the lobby, though not as much as accepting the demand and then follow, failing to follow through on it. Um, okay. Uh, feeling that the French government isn't doing enough to foster t closer ties with Britain, the pro-British lobby demands a grand gesture. And so here we have uh, the f uh, French-British Union that requests that we declare a rivalry with Russia, Russia's known opponent of British interests. And this is going to feel like pulling teeth a little bit uh, if we get events like this, because to be honest, uh, Russia, or not Russia specifically, but GPs in general, you don't want to have rivalries with. Uh, if you can avoid it, or this is my opinion, because then they are very likely to join Diplo plays against you if they rival you back, which they are quite likely to. Uh, also available for those of Sphere of Influence expansion is the new Fund Lobby's Diplomatic Action, which is going to be uh, interesting to see how strong this is. Um, this action works in a fair way that is fairly similar to bankroll, so it kind of seems like bankroll plus, in that it transfers money from the treasury of the initiating country, but instead of the money going to the target uh, country's treasury, it is paid out amongst the target country's pops instead. And this is interesting. I'm not sure what strategies are going to be available based on this. We'll, we'll kind of uh, cruise through the rest of this paragraph with who gets the uh, what share of the money dependent on the target's political setup and how much uh, power sharing is going on when trying to fund lobbies in an autocratic country nobody's going to bother spreading the money around with poor laborers who have no same politics whatsoever so maybe if you have a wealth voting country and you just dump money to them it dumps money to the capitalists and then do these capitalists like are they more willing to invest and like this type of thing um, it's interesting to think about, but fundamentally, I imagine that, uh, this is going to be, uh, better than bankroll, uh, just fund lobbies, uh, as, if, you, in terms of if you're trying to get what you want from the country, not if you are actually trying to assist the country, um, just giving money to their treasury is probably better assistance to them than giving money to their pops, but you might prefer to just give money to their pops. Especially if you're, like, exporting consumer goods to them. Um, because, okay, uh, the capitalists might reinvest that money, but I have to imagine they actually probably don't. They probably just spend it on consumption. And so uh, if you are exporting consumer goods to them, uh, the country will have more buy orders of consumer goods. The consumer goods will get more expensive, uh, which will allow you to increase the equilibrium amount of exports you are doing. Okay. The precise effect of fund lobbies depends on whether a pro-country or pro-overlord lobby to targeting the initiator already exists in the country. Uh, again, you're probably going to be doing this uh, pretty aggressively against subjects whom you are trying to maintain good relations. If one does not exist, the money goes toward pr uh, promoting the creation of such a lobby. And so maybe it's the case that you just use this money to seed lobbies. Uh, uh, you know, to try and get them to spawn, and then once they spawn, you stop, you pull back the money, with a weekly chance for it to happen. If such a lobby already exists, or once one is created, the pack switches to supporting the lobby by increasing the pop attraction of the interest groups that belong to the boosted lobby. 
This is also interesting because normally you can't really affect the clout uh, in other people's countries in a direct way as this. Um, and this is going to allow you to do this. Now, to be fair, you can build a bunch of... Being able to foreign invest also allows you to uh, affect the clout in the foreign country. But, um, okay. Which over time will increase the combined clout of the lobby's interest groups, which in turn translates into greater mechanical effects and impact on decision making. I, I, so the, the 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 thing the nut or like the the thing that is going to be we're going to find out is just how much uh, this sort of stuff, which makes it sound like it can affect AI behavior greatly and is super interesting and involved, uh, just how much it affects the AI behavior. Um, and this type of thing, and currently the AI is kind of behaves nonsensically very often, and so it's not that I think that this will create like some sort of immersive AI, but if it does, that'd be super sweet. Um, okay, we see fun lobbies, sending money. All right. Finally, I wanted to wish you a happy Thursday like I forgot to do in the intro. Oh, wait. No, oh, that's not what they said. Finally, I want to wrap up this dev diary by talking a little bit about modability and the extension of lobbies in, in the system. Besides the pro and anti-capital uh, country lobbies mentioned above, the system comes with a built-in support for neutral foreign lobbies uh, that have a goal relating to another country, which is neither friendly nor antagonistic. Interesting. But this... Okay, this is for mods, though. Um, and even for domestic lobbies that pursue an entirely internal agenda in the country they are created. The entire system of forming, appeasing, and applying mechanical effects from the lobbies is completely moddable, and we definitely intend to uh, use this system to create new and interesting types of lobbies in the future updates. Okay, cool. So, well, I, I mean, like, that's maybe an oversimplification. The fact that we can have this secondary thing other than laws that is promoting certain actions by the players actually probably a really big deal moving forward and this is maybe just the start of some interesting features we're going to be getting that's all for today uh since this one ended up being pretty long and we actually have a bunch of semi-related things to go over as well we've decided to change the dev diary schedule so that next week's dev diary will be about diplomatic catalysts and the diplomatic ai we also wanted to talk more about power blocks and how they fit in a greater uh fit uh and how and we'll find a way to fit that in before release are you telling me we're gonna have a happy tuesday we're probably gonna have a happy tuesday all right well that was the dev diary i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe you know do the youtube algorithm thing and other than that other than that have a happy thursday